Um, usually when we select the next god, it starts with what the game needs. Uh, what pantheon, what role, uh, what's represented in that pantheon, be it, you know, we have five males, one female, um, kind of see what the needs of the game are, make sure we have all our pantheons to represent all the classes, all the player types, and then just get a certain feel within each pantheon. Gods that have a unique personality, or something we haven't added to the game yet. For instance, Scylla, we took her and made her uh, just something absolutely unique to Spite. So we're always looking for that interesting kind of, kind of. Uh, yeah, that, um, that initial look that we do is, is very, uh, it's very high level. We don't really go deep into the lore, but we're looking just at the surface of if there's anything really interesting that'll grab us within that pantheon. Um, and usually we know if we want to do like, we're like, well, it's really good to have a mind guardian. We don't have one yet. You know, how would we go about that? So we're kind of looking for examples that, that would fit well with adding that into the game. My name is Tina Grossreeder, and I help with the god creation process by looking at articles online about the god Janus. Janus is the god of archways and doorways. Um, in Latin, the word actually means archway or doorway. And uh, he is a two-faced god. Usually he's depicted with an older beard. And on his other face, it would usually be a younger, more youthful man. After I've done all the research, I send the information over to the devs and the heads of the department to see if they think that the god fits into the game. Yeah, well, the, the initial idea meeting is kind of uh, open to whoever wants to come in. And uh, the goal of it is to, um, you know, basically the person who's been doing the lore research will present the lore, uh, what, uh, what's known about the history of the character. And, and then everyone's trying to just generate cool ideas that might fit that lore. Um, one of the big advantages of doing a game based on mythology is that when you're doing the design, um, you don't really have to invent everything from scratch. So a lot of these gods have um, abilities that they used in their actual history that work really well as abilities for them to use in game. So it's the idea meeting is really about you know, what would be cool based on who the character is. We want to have a really good idea of what the god's personality is going to be, the direction we're going to take that, and also what aspect of their mythology uh, we want to use and want to keep. I think, I think it's easy to think that the designer's kind of uh, by himself driving what that design might be, but the truth is uh, really the input is coming from the whole team. Suggestions are also coming from you know, our eSports managers, our community managers, uh, people that have a lot of experience with the game. To make sure we get something that you know is, is fun, is well balanced, um, and adds something to the game, isn't just kind of a repeat of what we've done before. Concept art is pretty much the first artistic step of the god creation process. Uh, essentially my job is to come up with the general look of the god before any of the modelers go on to the more time-consuming tasks of actually building it. You usually focus a little bit on the character in relationship to their role, uh, into their lore, and into the rest of the pantheon. You know, how do they compare to other gods that we already have? Are they similar enough to still feel within our game, but different enough to still feel interesting. Definitely tried a lot of different things here. Um, with our early concepts of Janus, we were looking at a more human form kind of body. Um, just different try ways to kind of uh, organize the idea of the key and the rod. The idea was that we would make him more of a magical construct. Uh, so more about like floating armor and chains and just magic energy to kind of convey the idea of Janus. It was already something of an ethereal, strange kind of god. So usually the way how it works is I'll get a concept for a god, um, like Janice's concept. Uh, was this right here. So I'll get a concept like this. And then what I will do is we'll take this and make a high poly model. Then from there, what we'll do is we'll make a uh, low poly model because computers can't handle the geometry. Like if you look at the tessellation here, just the face alone is a lot of polygon. So uh, the low poly model we'll make will be like this. And it's it's very simple geometry. You see like there's huge squares for the areas that you work with. Then whenever you get this done, you will project the high poly detail from here onto the low poly model here. Janus in the lore is like a two-faced kind of god, like the god of beginnings and endings, passages, doorways. This is kind of a cool thing where it's like design is kind of, so a lot of times you know design will tell art how to, how to handle their business and you kind of like make a model based on the design. This is an instance where it's kind of like a marriage of the two and you get 50-50 where like design was kind of influenced by art and art also influenced by design. So um, yeah, that's, that's the journey right there. Coming from the animation perspective, we try and chime in with the character concepts, make sure we have, first of all, things that will represent well, things from the player view, try and find things that animation can hook onto. Um, 
On the other side, we also try and bring up things that are going to be problems, things that might not animate well, things that might not play well with other things. So initially, we try and just make sure that the concepts we're working on have either strong animation hooks, or if, if there aren't hooks available, at least make sure they can work within our systems. Janus is a, is a pretty interesting case because animation carries a lot of what happens in game with him. He's the god of transitions, and we uh, wanted to work transitions into silhouette change and make him change as he did certain things in the game. Early in the process we determined that would be shifting parts within the model that we key different ways to signal these cues to the player in game. We always try and look for a hook like this because this is more fun for us to figure out than a cape or hair or something like that. My role initially starts out with us discussing the abilities and what the god is going to do in the context of the game and how that's all going to work and kind of figuring out not only what that's going to look like but how it's going to function from a gameplay standpoint and how feasible it is. The, the whole portal teleporting system um, is kind of very challenging in, in terms of what's happening with Smite because you're entering this portal and then you're passing through space. So A, figuring out how to get it set up with the programmers figuring out all the calculations and us figuring out how to make the portals work and have the correct orientation and then what was going to happen as the player's experience of traveling them. The other interesting effects thing on Janus was that uh, we came up with these ideas of how he was going to move around. So he's kind of got this Iron Man-esque quality where he flies around and he has stuff coming off of his hands and his feet. And the only way we could end up doing that was to define in the animations when basically every 0.3 seconds I have to refresh all of those things. And Janus has, you know, 50 animations that sometimes are three seconds long. Um, so that was kind of interesting. It turned out very good, but it was it was a massive amount of just entering numbers that were 0.313 seconds away from each other. Well, after we have our design meeting of really what we want to try to do with the god, then I'll hook up all the um, abilities and all the code to try out the first pass of our design. With, with every god, we try to push the boundaries on what we can do with the game. We have to stay within the 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 gameplay rules, but we try to do something kind of unique for every god. And so for Janus, we were playing with the portal technology of being able to go through walls and drawing a portal on the ground and having enemies fall through it. And so we did a lot of work to make that as smooth as possible with how the camera treats your character falling through the world. Um, also there's the, there's the obvious tech of being able to go through the world under it and then spawn up in the air. Uh, presents its own kinds of challenges. So once we get the, uh, the initial programming pass uh, completed and once we get the rough models and rough animations, um, the designer takes all of that and helps to put it together uh, in our configuration tool. Here at Hi res we have a uh, proprietary configuration tool that we do all of our um, values you'd expect for damage, for timings of abilities, casting times, anything anything that kind of drives the gameplay is basically set up in this tool. The first day the designer will just be in a test map um, that has you know things where we can verify the range of the abilities, the amount of damage being done. So during the configuration time the designer is really making sure that each, each piece is working as designed as intended before we go into our first play test. Because um, once we do our first play test you're in a full room with, with uh, 10 people playing um, if things don't read right or something's not quite working right, it kind of invalidates that test and you end up wasting you know, a good bit of time. Um, so it's very important the designer you know, checks out every little piece of it, make sure it's working appropriately, and if it's not, to send back requests for additional special effects if something's not reading well or um, for programming adjustments if something wasn't um, maybe quite working right. Okay, for those that need to know, it's my play test. It's my play okay. test. It's my play test. <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'll yell out there. It's my play test! Generally what we look for when we have a new god is we try to think of what's the worst thing this guy can do. Before we do any of the breakdown, before we do any um, damage numbers or mana values or cooldown, uh, uh, testing each rank, we'll, we will first try to think of what's the worst thing this guy can do because that's going to be the most game-breaking thing that could possibly happen. Um, and since this god has a lot of teleporting abilities, it's it, there's a number of things that have happened and can happen. A lot of the times during the playtest, things will come up that we haven't even thought of. Um, so we'll try to mix up god interactions. We'll try to get some gods in there that often like to break things. Like we'll have like nausea or just, you know, gods that can put other gods in just, you know, compromising situations. So, and especially with a god like this, the one that can teleport around, um, 
you just never know what, you, what can happen. So after we like the design and we lock the design down, that's when the real polish kind of comes into the character. When the final uh, animation, the final special effects, all the pieces that make the personality really pop out, like uh, the voice, are added into the character. Um, that's a really exciting time because it's, it's sort of where you get to see all the ideas and the things you've had to imagine in your head kind of come together into one solid, cohesive piece. And then uh, after, after that's all brought together, um, then we have kind of one uh, final play test, which is just to make sure everything is feeling the way we want to. Warning, I'm gonna yell really loud. Smile play test! That wasn't that bad. Smile play test! So after a weekend of play testing with Janice, we take the community feedback and we try to apply what we think would be the best fit for the god. And right now we are playtesting the final changes uh, before the live release of the Janus patch. So yeah, we're about eight hours out from the final Janus release and um, uh, hopefully everything goes well.